Asia, Australia and Africa. The western side of the Arabian Sea, where temperatures hover below 28 degrees Celsius, they recorded 93 cyclones through the 20th century. Multiply that by nearly fourfold for the warmer eastern side over the Bay of Bengal. Worries are the Arabian Sea temperatures are fast catching up, and experts say the entire Indian Ocean is warming up much faster than the Atlantic or the Pacific. Last week, Cyclone Taute, amongst the most powerful storms for decades, that formed in the Arabian Sea, slamming into the west coast of India, killing at least 150. And then this week, another cyclone, Yas, that formed over the Bay of Bengal and hit the east coast of India, killing at least five. Scientists say India is very vulnerable because one out of seven people lives along the coast. That number is projected to triple over the next few decades. The wider region remains at risk as well. A hotter Indian Ocean has been linked with bushfires in Australia, floods in Africa and locust swarms. This just in from Hong Kong, the uh, former media tycoon Jimmy Lai has been sentenced to 14 months in prison. That charge is related to an incident which took place on October the 1st in 2019, where he was found to have participated in an unauthorized assembly. He is the founder of the publication Apple Daily and already is serving a 14-month sentence for having taken part in other unauthorized assemblies in August of 2019. Henry will be back in just a moment with your Asia business update. Now, there are border closures and travel restrictions for Singapore. That may have confined many within the island, but we'll find out what people have been doing in the meantime to fill up their time and how one woman is making use of a once in 17 year opportunity to create some art, amazing art with cicadas. I'm getting my COVID-19 vaccine breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. and documenting all my side effects. Bam, the sauna set in. But with cases of infection among those who are vaccinated, how protected am I? Now what we're seeing are actually mutants, which are quite different from the original strand. Talking Point, tonight, 9.30pm on CNA. From the top stories in Asia. A quicker, portable way of testing for COVID-19 in just five minutes. To breaking news in the US and Europe. US President-elect Joe Biden is set to formally introduce his top economic team. With an eye on markets opening across the world. Wall Street's major indices all closed the month with double-digit percentage gains. It's the one bulletin that offers you a global perspective. World Tonight, daily, on CNA. Have fun while breaking a sweat on your next visit to Gangnam. Enjoy the weightlessness of bungee fitness. Or learn the health benefits of pole dancing. So don't miss the opportunity to feel the burn with the latest workout trends in Korea. Gangnam Insider's Picks, Sunday on CNA. This program is brought to you by the Gangnam Goo Office. Oh my god, they've been blasting the wrecks. A brand new season of Undercover Asia. This June, Asia's past, present and future comes together. Race to feed the world as scientists, farmers and entrepreneurs solve the impending food crisis. Journalist Yomaraki unveils the transformation of Japan's social and political identity in deciphering Japan and relive the history of the Chinese Communist Party as it marks 100 years of existence. This June on CNA. He's just looking at us with his eyes wide open. Oh, 
and so cute. I'm Shushan, and in this series, I'll be tracking into hidden parts of Singapore. Oh my God, treacherous! To find out what's being done to save our biodiversity. Every animal play a significant role. And if we're running out of time. It seems that there is an uptrend in number of road kills. It's in our nature. Video on demand on CNA.Asia. Welcome back in business. Now checking Asian markets at this moment. Markets in South Korea heading higher and poised to end the week on a positive note. The benchmark Kospi is now rising uh, about uh, eight tenths of 1% at this moment. And the Nikkei 225 are also rising by around 2% at this moment. And cyclical stocks like steel and machinery makers are among the big gainers in Japan. And Tokyo Seikan and Hino Motors both are gaining more than 7% at this moment. While well, the Nikkei 225 may have been up, but figures out this morning showed the unemployment rate in Japan rose to 2.8% in April, higher than the 2.6% jobless rate in March. That also comes slightly worse than analysts' expectations. Economists say that the data reflects a current mismatch in the supply and demand for labor in the Japanese economy. And recent purchasing managers' data have been pointing to a tightening labor market. And latest jobs to applicants ratio was at 1.09, slightly lower from the previous months and on the back of that labor market friction. And looking ahead, Japan is expected to post a higher jobless rate this month as the extension of virus emergency measures in Tokyo and Osaka weigh on jobs demand, particularly in the services sector. While well, checking in on other regional markets, Australia's ASX 200 climbing higher at this moment is now up by 1%. And the benchmark looks set to record its best weekly performance since early April, mining stocks leading the way. In Singapore, the benchmark SDI in positive territory is now up by around 7 tenths of 1%. Investor sentiment lifted by the firmer closing on Wall Street overnight. While border closures and travel restrictions amid the pandemic have kept many Singaporeans within the confines of their tiny island nation for more than a year now. And many have picked up some form of recreation or hobby to help fill up their time. And others have used the opportunity to turn a passion into a profitable enterprise. Samsudin Ishak ended up having a lot of time on his hands after the COVID-19 pandemic hit. After the pandemic, we were out of job. I mean, uh, the project stopped, so I was back to Singapore. Uh, my, my job is mostly outstation. So like a number of Singaporeans, he decided to pick up a new pursuit. I live here close to the sea. I think uh, I find that uh, kayaking is uh, one of the hobby. And I'm a fishing enthusiast guy, so that's where I started and look for around for kayak. There's a couple of companies which uh, even sell kayak and uh, help you to maintain your kayak. The rising interest in kayaking has also translated to higher demand for related services in the sport. Singaporeans got stuck in Singapore, uh, so they are looking for activities, and I think kayaking is one of the interesting activity for them. We do sightseeing, we do exploration, you know, we do some uh, exercise actually. It's really a very good exercise. I think people can spend thousands of dollars on bicycle. I think a one kayak will cost about, depends on the range. Some are basic like mine is uh, not too much, it's just a thousand over dollars. Some can go up to three, four thousand. Entrepreneur Mohammad Nordin knew an opportunity when he saw it, so he expanded his kayaking and fishing business. Due to the pandemic, the business of, for doing kayak fishing tour increased uh, tremendously la, with the help of social media and sharing. La. So I decided to purchase more of the kayak from a local distributor. I, I sold off my car because ne- n- not never really use it and then I used that money to actually purchase a van and uh, invest more on the uh, on the kayak itself. La. It's a similar story on land. Businesses dealing in cycling-related products have reported a significant increase in demand for bicycles and related accessories, giving a lift to prices and revenues as well. <laughs> But it's plants, not bikes, that are the passion project for Nicholas, Darren, Haikal and Azizan. 
The hobby brought them together in September last year, and they're now partners in a company that runs a greenhouse. This has been a hobby since many years ago. The, the plants look amazing, right? I mean, you look at the leaves, each new leaf comes out different. So you, you don't know what you're going to expect when, when the leaf...